crashed her car through this building, destroying all of our lives. I had to be the one to tell my sister her babies were gone. She said, how am I supposed to live without my babies? Gut-wrenching grief in a Monroe courtroom as an aunt talks through her tears. Her young niece and nephew both killed when a car crashed into a birthday party. The driver faced family members and a judge today. Now, that driver is charged with a total of eight criminal counts, including two counts of second-degree murder and driving drunk, causing death. And Taryn, the suspect's lawyer claims it was a medical condition, not alcohol, that caused that crash. Fox News' Camilla Miri has more from court tonight. Marcella Chedister shuffled into a Monroe County courtroom Tuesday morning, charged with two counts of second degree homicide and operating a vehicle while intoxicated, causing death and serious injury. She chose to drink and drive. And she took my grandbaby from us. Police say she's the 66-year-old woman who crashed her car into a birthday party, killing two children, 8-year-old Alana Phillips, her 4-year-old brother Zane, and injuring several others, including their older brother and their mother. I had to be the one to tell my sister her babies were gone when they removed her ventilator yesterday. She said, how am I supposed to live without my babies? It happened Saturday at the Swan Boat Club on Branchow Road in Berlin Township. Chedister has close ties to the club. She lives just a few houses away. She's a club member, and at one time, she was the boat club commodore. During my 10 years of being a member of the boat club, but most of the time I see her, she's been highly intoxicated, and I've watched people try to walk her out the door dozens and dozens of times. And after the crash... There was a preliminary breath test done, which indicated that her blood alcohol level was significantly over the legal limit. The defense attorney arguing... My client has a history of having seizures. And this history has lasted since last November. It started of an epileptic type seizure in her legs. Your Honor, there is no indication whatsoever in any of the evidence that we have uncovered in this case that the defendant suffered from a seizure at the time of this incident. Chedister's bond set at $1.5 million cash shorty. In addition, the victim's family is now suing her and Verna's bar, where she allegedly had one drink hours before the crash. We're going to find out exactly what happened for the family because they deserve answers. I think we all know that in, in our normal world, someone should not lose control of their vehicle and crash into a little children's birthday party the way that this happened. They were sitting at that table eating and this woman crashed her car through this building, destroying all of our lives. That was Fox 2's Camilla Mary reporting. We'll have much more on this terrible, tragic story on Fox 2 News at 6. The Justice Department agrees to a massive settlement with the victims of Larry Nasser. Today, the DOJ announced a settlement of more than $138 million. It will go to more than 100 people who accused the FBI of mishandling sexual assault allegations against Nasser. The former sports doctor worked at Michigan State University and served as a team doctor for USA Gymnastics. Hundreds of women said they were assaulted by Nasser during treatment for sports injuries. The Justice Department has acknowledged it failed to step in for more than a year, including similar settlements. Roughly $1 billion has now been paid out to Nasser's sexual assault victims. Well, more layoffs issued at Stellantis, this time at the Sterling Heights assembly plant. The cuts took effect on Monday, impacting roughly 200 full-time workers. The plant builds the Ram 1500 pickup truck. The automaker cites a changing global market as a reason for the move and says more cuts are coming across the board in the coming months. It's the latest round of layoffs across the company since the start of 2024. The United Auto Workers Union slamming the move, saying the company is putting profits over people. All right, let's talk about the weather now. A cloudy, uh, windy day is expected tomorrow and 
Temperatures, well, they're going to take another dip. Oh, today was actually a little warmer than it yeah, looked. Yeah, not bad. But uh, what's going on for the rest of the week? Let's check in with Rich. Taryn Roop, it's the roller coaster of April. That's what it is. Uh, we get some nice days. We get a couple of cool days. You can see there is some steady rains happening over central Illinois, northern Indiana, parts of northern Ohio. We're right on the edge here, but more showers are crossing uh, the central part of our state. So between now and sunrise tomorrow, we will likely see some additional showers right now some light rain around city airport in ann arbor especially across lenaway and monroe county so near the ohio border it is rather damp and on the cool side 50 here 60 at lansing for grand rapids as well look at that 64 is for bad axe and for mount pleasant live pictures from mount clemens that's the clinton river 54 degrees on the east side now tomorrow night into thursday morning a hard frost is likely these are freeze watches in effect again not tonight but tomorrow night, light showers are going to be with us. And then check out what's coming up next. A cooler pattern the next couple of days. Milder for the weekend with a few showers. Roop and Taren, a full check of the seven-day coming up in 10. All right, good to see that. The dry work next to the NFL Draft. It's a big deal, and you're looking now mm -hmm. at a sneak peek of the NFL Draft Theater in Detroit. It's set up in the Monroe Street Midway near Campus Martius, and it looks absolutely awesome. That's where dreams of going pro will come true for so many college football players. And Detroit, just a couple of days away from entering the national spotlight for all the right reasons. And Fox 2's Liz Lewin shows us the result of a year of planning the NFL Draft. It's almost done here, so we're, we're ready to go for Thursday. It's Campus Martius unlike you've ever seen it before. We want to make sure it looks right on camera, but also want to make sure that the experience is top notch for the fans coming down. Big dreams are about to come true on this stage in a matter of days. You talk about changing lives here, but also creating long lasting memories for the fans that are watching. The NFL is putting finishing touches on their 2024 draft stage in the heart of downtown Detroit. It's hard to miss. It was about 16 or 18 months uh, in the making. Uh, my first trip, I think it was about 18 months ago when I first set foot here in Detroit and walked this very site. Um, and it's great to see an empty parking lot and that vision actually come to life and being watched, watch it being built over the last four weeks. This all took months to years to plan. The build started on March 29th and teams are still here working until those lights shine on Thursday. Our leadership is thankful for the city of Detroit, for the residents that have supported us and the, the business owners and again our, our city partners. This is it, where the draft picks and their loved ones, along with some very special fans from each team, will gather. These seats, though, are accessed by ticket only. I mean, look at it. The theater itself is pretty jaw-dropping. The NFL events and creative teams are the brains behind the decor and design. It's a stage fit for the city. There's a process that goes into it that takes about a year and a half going through the city, getting inspiration to make sure that it's reflective of Detroit. Oh. And yes, the community did have input. We went around to many different groups around the city and made sure that everybody had a perspective in the decor. And then we took it back to our very talented team who wrote a brief and sort of brought it to life. Liz Lewin, Fox 2 News. Well, navigating downtown will be challenging, so it's important to take note of the final road, uh, round of road closures. And starting at midnight tonight, Detroit will lock down the draft site from Jefferson to 75. If you're interested in attending but are worried about parking and driving with the road closures, the city's chief of infrastructure recommends using shuttles or park and ride options. Our recommendation is to use a one of the park and ride or fan shuttle options for coming downtown. People who want to park close definitely can, but they will likely pay a premium for it and could potentially be sitting in traffic. So we've set up a number of park and ride and fan shuttle options all around the, the downtown for people to be able to put their car in, not have to pay a lot of money, and be able to take a shuttle or public transit into the draft footprint. For a complete list of all the road closures, make sure you head to our website, fox2detroit.com. Well, as thousands of fans descend on Detroit for the draft, Attorney General Dana Nessel says her office is ready to investigate any complaints of suspicious activities, including this. Unfortunately, events like this really provide a lot of opportunities for the scammers. So what we want to make people aware of is this. Do your homework before you come to Detroit for the draft. Consumer scams, as you heard her here say right there, they ramp up during these huge events. Human trafficking can also see a spike during these types of big events. The AG's office has dedicated a consumer protection unit to look into reports of suspicious activity during the draft. 
We'll hear more from Dana Nessel coming up on Fox 2 News at 6.